Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Garage Bullion and to another episode on my flood damaged Porsche 968. In the previous episode, we installed the new water pump, uh, all of the pulleys and the balance shaft sprockets and the um, timing belt. If you've missed that, I'll put a link for you up above so you can catch up. And in this episode, we are going to continue the belt service. Um, the first thing I want to do is to tension up the timing belt, put in the balance shaft belt. Um, once that is all in its spot and tensioned reasonably, um, we're going to start doing the cam timing. I want to be 100% sure that the cam is perfectly timed. We've got some adjustment on the front of the sprocket here and I have some dial meters that we can set up to help me measure the depth of the valves etc. Um, so we'll get that all done and with a little bit of luck I think we'll be able to start and run the engine again. Uh, which is going to be quite a milestone for me on this project. Um, there are th things that I haven't read yet tackled. Um, I still have this pulley on the air conditioning pump that is completely shot. Uh, so I need to fix that. But that's details. We'll get to that at a later stage. So for now, sit back, relax, and let's start working. Let's pull the pin out. There we go. The next thing for us to do is to start building up the crank pulley further. For that, I've got a new backing plate that has to go on. There we go. And the restored balance shaft pulley also has to go on. There we go. All right. And now we can bring in the new balance shaft belt. First thing we have to do is to get this guy aligned. So for the top balance shaft sprocket, we have to align that little chip in the sprocket with this little chip in the backing plate. That's now done. Let's go to the bottom, get that aligned, and then we can slip the belt on. Okay, now for the bottom sprocket, you can see there's this little plastic tab here. And the tab has to be aligned to this little dent in the sprocket, which it is now sort of kind of done. Um, so we can now bring the belt in. So that one's nicely aligned. Um, we'll tension this guy later. Um, for now, I just wanted to get it installed. It's a little difficult to see the top one, but it's also aligned. Let me see if I can get a focus on this somehow. Not really, but the top one's also aligned. Um, tension I have to check. I've got a cricket gauge for that. Okay, with the balance shaft belt on, the next thing we have to do is we have to build up the rest of that crankshaft pulley system. So the next one to go on is this guy, which is the one for the multi-rib belt that drives the alternator and the air conditioner. And then this guy, which is the power steering pump pulley. Once this is installed, we can remove the flywheel lock and then we can see if everything stays in time. bring in the power steering pulley. All right, so that's 210 on the torque wrench. Let's start pulling. Oh. So now we can go down, get the flywheel lock out, and then see if we can rotate the engine. All right, let's see if the scroll will spin. Yeah, 
whatever it goes. Let's hope she turns. Everything's working well. All right, so this is the moment I have to tell you guys that I'm not going to check this cam timing with a dial gauge. And the reason for that is I don't have all the kit. Um, again here, 968 are special. I figured that if I had the dial gauges, I'll be good enough, but it's not true. I actually need to remove this oil feed tube again. I have to have a special tool plus I have to have a compressor that can deliver three bar accurately for quite quite some time while I'm adjusting. So I need to go and buy a whole bunch of kit to make that possible. And since I never changed the timing on the sprocket here, I think we're good. I don't think I have to do the cam timing. I think I need to do that at some point. So I will definitely be looking into getting the re remainder of the tooling I need to set the timing. But for now, I'm happy with what I'm seeing, so I'm going to continue building up this block. All right, so now we bring on the cam cover. And if you're thinking this is really clean, you'd be right, because this was aqua blasted. And it's probably really better than new. And now we just have to get this guy on here. That looks good. This gets clicked in like that. And now we just have to bring in the bolts. Okay, and each one of these bolts get a new washer and a new rubber foot. So that is the valve cover installed again. I'm really happy with what, how this looks. It um, has a beautiful finish and the yellow passivated rings really sets it off nicely. All right, so you'd think I would now continue building up the system here, putting in the plug leads and so forth, but I'm actually not going to do that. The reason I brought this guy in now is because I wanted the engine to be watertight again, because I need to dive into this mess down here. All of these injectors needs to come out. I want to service all of them and they all need to be cleaned. Um, so that is what I'm going to be doing now. What I need to do now is to disconnect all four of these injectors from the fuel rail, then I'll clean the fuel rail. It's not too bad, it's a little dirty, but this will clean up really nicely. These guys on the other hand are quite dirty, as you can see. I've also got four of these kits to service each one of these injectors, so it'll get a new cap and a new filter and all those things. So the first thing we have to do is to disconnect them from the rail, and that's done by loosening these little four square thingies. That's number one. And then we can pull the injector free. All right, that's. Ooh, this is some really nasty fuel coming out of this. Oh yeah, that's a stale fuel. Good thing we don't have smell of vision. That's injector number one. Oof. Let's get the rest out. So in this kit that I've got for the injectors, I'll show you what I've got. It's got a little plastic yellow spacer. It's got a little filter. It's got two O-rings and it's got a cap. 
I don't think this cap is the right size. It looks too, like it's a little bit too tall for me. So I'll put back these little green caps. You can see they are a little bit smaller, but the first thing we have to do is to get this cap off and that's not the easiest job, but that's the first thing we need to do. So you just put a little screwdriver under here and you just start prying it a little and it should eventually let go. Okay, it didn't go far, but you can see that this green and the blue cap is not the same. So I'm not going to put these blue caps on. I'm going to keep my little green cap. However, the rest is good to be replaced. So let me just throw that out there. Give this a bit of a clean up. Right, that looks good. Then we put in the new yellow spacer, new O-ring, and then I'm putting back this green cap. And the way to do that is to take a 10 millimeter socket and then just put the little cap in there and pop the injector back. Here we go. So that's a new O-ring with a yellow spacer. So that's good. Now we pull off the O-ring at the top. There we go. And then the last thing we need to do is to get this old filter out. For that, I've bought this special tool, which you really don't need. This was like five bucks, so I thought, why not? But in essence, it's just a wood screw that goes into this filter and you screw it down as far as you can into that filter, about there should be good. And then you start pushing on the back here and it pulls the filter free like that. And you can see that this filter is quite dirty, so it's good I'm replacing it. Just gonna squirt some cleaner in there as well. Make sure it's good. It's looking good. And then you position the filter such there. Take a little hammer and just tap it into the spot. Like that. And we put on a new O-ring and that's one injector done. Now I just need to do three more and we can put this all back together and into the car. Moments later. Okay, so that's the injector service completed. These filters were not too bad. There was a little bit of stuff in them, but they were not too bad. So that bodes well for the injectors themselves. As you can see, all of these things have been cleaned as well. The bolts, these little silicon seals, and these little clips. So I'm gonna get the clips on, and then we'll get the injectors back into the car. Soon after. All right, so that is the fuel rail installed. It's looking very nice. As you can see down there, it's been cleaned up. There's no more mud or anything sitting there. It's nice and clean. But that then means we are now ready to move on to our next step. So what I'm going to do now is get the distributor set up, get the covers on and get the plug leads sorted. Okay, so I've got all of the coolant lines now plumbed up again. You can see this line is in, it's all hooked up to the radiator. Also down there it's hooked up, onto the water pump it's hooked up, all the way back to the reservoir. So this is all done, the car is plumbed, we can put coolant in. We can also put in the power steering fluid, this is now also complete. The next thing I wanted to do was to hook up the fuel line back here to go back to the fuel rail over here. But seeing as the fuel in here was so stale, 
I think I want to actually flush the fuel tank and that's not something I will be able to do in this episode. So I guess you guys have already guessed it, but we are not starting this engine in this episode. We are not far off. Um, I really just have to do the fluids and then bring in the spark plugs and then we should be ready to start. So I'll make sure all of the fluids are done off camera so that the next time you join me, we will definitely be starting this engine and see if we can make it run again. Until next time, guys. Goodbye.